So thank you for all joining. The, the goal really today is to, uh, to share how, as an organization, you can uh, uh, generate uh, from the ground up, from the people, uh, a, a culture of cybersecurity. And we'll talk about, of course, the cybersecurity landscape. We're going to talk about how the people are actually crucial to that, uh, that landscape and uh, why uh, you can, with very easy, very simple uh, reflexes, you can actually uh, generate that culture of cybersecurity to make sure that your organization is protected, that you, you're not so much at, at risk uh, in, uh, in, in that space. And of course, I hope that we can have a lot of Q&A and I'm happy to answer any type of questions you may have. As you can uh, see from my accent, I'm French, even though I'm uh, talking to you out of Brooklyn today. So I hope you can still understand me okay. And I hope the, the, the captioning will work as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So let's start uh, with, really with the, 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 the lay of the land, the, the cybersecurity landscape. So it's really, really about uh, just the fact that today, I mean, threats are everywhere. There are so many uh, issues happening out there, like all the breaches you can hear from the news all the time. It's kind of uh, super scary when, when you think about it. Uh, the, uh, the phishing attacks, the, the ransomwares, and you can see that those cyber criminals, they're, they're very strong. They're, I mean, they, have, they have a real business behind their back and they're trying to adapt to whatever solution, protection solution we're putting out there. So it's, uh, I always like to think about it as the, 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 the game of the cat and the mouse. Uh, so we, as an organization, we as a cybersecurity product, if I think about Dashlin, we need to find the ways to be uh, always ahead of the, the, the game, always ahead uh, at protecting our, our people, our organization, to make sure that uh, we are safe and we can conduct our business, we can conduct our activities without being uh, bothered by, uh, by those uh, malicious people. And unfortunately, uh, whether we want it or not, uh, passwords, are one of the, the, the keys to entering and to accessing uh, uh, illegally into your organization. They are like a, what we call here the path of least resistance for cyber criminals. It's pretty easy for them to try and, uh, and get passwords as a key to enter the, the, your organization, the internal IT of the organization. And that's not just like a small organization, like a large enterprise companies. Of course, there are big targets. But if you're a small business, if you're a nonprofit, it's the same. Uh, we're all at risk, and we shouldn't assume that uh, cyber criminals are just targeting like uh, uh, the, 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 the the big business out there. They're, they're actually uh, most of the time targeting the ones that they feel are the weakest, and that's also uh, the, the small businesses and the nonprofit organizations. And like I was saying before, uh, they're, they're changing all the time. There's so much happening in, in the market that there are new solutions coming out there. But because the the, uh, the um, the, the, the hackers need to go around those uh, solutions, those protections. They will always find tricky solutions and work around to, to find the, 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 the way to enter the, your organization. And it's most of the time relying on social engineering. What is a, uh, what, what we mean by social engineering is really like leveraging the knowledge they can get on your people to fake that they are uh, relevant or like a legal people, but that's not the case. And at the end of the day, they're trying to get as much information about you, getting your credentials, getting your logins, your password, and so on to be able to finally penetrate your IT systems and then do whatever they want in there. And whether it's a ransomware, whether it's stealing a intellectual property, whether it's like just disrupting your, your operations. And it's, um, they are very creative people. So let's start with a, with a, with a question maybe uh, out in the chat. Uh, do you know what percent of people reuse passwords? If you were to guess, uh, maybe that's something you can try and, uh, and uh, put in the chat if you uh, want to take a guess. 23%, 44%, 62%, 72%. I'll just give it a minute for everybody to try and, and get a vote. So there are actually quite a lot of different, uh, more like an CND, uh, as far as I can as I can tell. Oops, sorry. Um, actually, I don't remember the, the, <laughs> the, the answer. So maybe, uh, Casey, if you're out there, you can give the information. But I think it's at least... Um, I'll go ahead and see my notes here. It'll be easier for me. The answer is actually C, 63%. I was wondering if it was C or D, but it's, it's a very high number. People reuse password because that's convenient, because they don't have to bother with solutions about uh, what, uh, what, uh, how to, to, to share password. They can do it on post, they can do it uh, by email, by uh, whatever, WhatsApp, and so on. So that's pretty easy. And unfortunately, that's, uh, that's also one of the reasons why it's, uh, it becomes a, a bigger risk. Okay, another question. How many people admitted to reusing passwords from their personal accounts for their work accounts? Take a guess. 
And the problem here, and we're going to cover this uh, in, in more detail, is that uh, when you do that, if your personal account gets breached, then you're putting at risk uh, your, uh, your, your work uh, environment. And by the way, like uh, an anecdote, which is uh, there was a Dropbox breach uh, back in 2016, where Dropbox leaked something like 60 million accounts uh, uh, due to an employee that actually reused their Yahoo uh, credential and their Yahoo passwords for their Dropbox uh, employee session password. And uh, that leaked, and then the, that's the way, the, way the, 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 the hackers got into the Dropbox system. And so answer is B, 22%, which you can say is not that much, but it's still a, a lot of risk for organizations. So that's another place where we need to uh, educate uh, our, our people about the, um, the, the, the risk of doing that type of, uh, of things. Okay, a bit more metrics, uh, because they they're actually they speak for themselves. So in 2022, 82% of breaches actually involved some people element to it. Uh, so yet again, cybersecurity is first and foremost about the people and uh, how we make sure that the people are educated about cybersecurity. And 63% people, of people have actually reused passwords from other accounts, which is always a, a risk when you do that, because then if one gets stolen, then you can access uh, other systems through that, uh, that reuse. And 22% of workers, like we just saw, admitted to using password between personal and work accounts, which is uh, a bad idea at the end of the day. Okay. So, I mean, as you can imagine, passwords plus sticky notes or disaster waiting to happen, to happen. There are a few examples on the slide. The first one is the uh, Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Uh, I mean, that's, when, you, when you think about it, it's uh, really crazy how you can uh, accidentally, like, uh, uh, broadcast false missile warning to islanders and then you blame it on an employee who put the wrong button. But actually, uh, it's about the risk. And at the end of the day, if you have a sticky note with passwords all around the place, and you do a, like a Zoom call and if I have behind my back a password with a, with a sticky note, then uh, that's uh, putting that at, at, at risk. So uh, of course, there's no direct evidence that the, the, the password contributed to the missile alert, but think, think about the, the reputation, think about what the implication of it. There was actually a similar example uh, back in, uh, a few years ago at the, um, the, the Palais de l'Elysée, so like the, the French president uh, um, um, office, where there was a webinar with like some institutional, and there was a, the Wi-Fi password of the, the Elysée back in, on, the, on, 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 the, on the wall, which you shouldn't do, obviously. And if you think about a uh, nonprofit, because uh, that's the, the audience that we have today, uh, for all of you, uh, I mean, they are not uh, immune to, uh, to, to breaches. Uh, of course, on the right of that slide, you have like the big uh, corporate organization like Uber, American Airlines, and so on. But uh, on the left, it's really like in profit, the American Red Cross where it was breached, the YMC has been breached. So yet again, uh, uh, those breaches, uh, uh, they can impact everybody. And so you have uh, as much interest at uh, preventing them and building the culture of cybersecurity as uh, if there was uh, like uh, money on the line and, uh, and uh, big business on the line. So it's, uh, it's really important to but not underestimate the fact that uh, hackers will try to target you, whether you are a nonprofit, whether you are a hospital, whether you are in education, whether you are uh, in finance, everybody is, uh, is at risk. So um, I just want to, to, to make sure we don't think that's, uh, that there is no risk for everybody. Okay, another quiz. What percent of successful data breaches do you think involve stolen or compromised passwords? Let's see. 81%, 81%, 81%. Yeah, a lot of 81%. And the answer is actually 81%. Correct answer. Well done, everybody. So um, since passwords are so important, obviously, the, the, what we do in cybersecurity needs to start with passwords. It needs to start about educating employees are having a, the right password hygiene. I, it's a bit like, a, when I think about the job of a password manager like Dashlane, I, I always feel it's a bit like a, the dentist. So we're going to, uh, to give you the tool, we're going to give you the best practices about how you should manage your password hygiene. The same way the dentist will give you a toothbrush and will explain to you how you, how you brush your teeth and floss. But at the end of the day, that dental hygiene or that password hygiene, it's really about uh, the, the end user, the employee, or like. Uh, you with your toothbrush that needs to actually do the work. So we need to really feel that we are in the place of education and making sure that uh, we give the proper uh, instruction and the proper tools for everybody to be 
in charge of owning their, their own uh, digital hygiene. Okay, so, and so why, why do you need a password manager in a sense? Uh, for a lot of different reasons. First, because password that are the root of access to any, uh, any of your accounts. And of course, you can have additional solution and we can talk uh, later on about uh, biometrics, about those solutions, but they not, they not, do not replace at the end of the day, the, the, that simple piece of text, which is a password and which is essentially uh, the equivalent of a secret. Huh? So um, as we are using more and more SaaS, like a uh, cloud computing, SaaS software, and so we have more accounts uh, on, on those systems, as we have also more data as an organization about uh, uh, the, 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 our activities. Uh, here we're talking about uh, donors BI information, for instance, for nonprofit, I suppose that's very critical, uh, but you also have, may have data about uh, the people you serve and the people you help. And uh, with uh, privacy rules and privacy regulation, it's super important to, to protect uh, that information. And there's also the fact that uh, uh, employees and volunteers will turn uh, into the organization. So how can you build like uh, ingrained, uh, ingrained uh, rituals about cybersecurity, cybersecurity in your organization so that you avoid having to redo it each time uh, there are new people around? And uh, of course, if you have someone uh, sharing the password with the next person and then they leave and then you create another risk. At the board level, if you think about your investors, if you think about your board of administration, of course, cybersecurity is taken very seriously because then that is the, both data privacy at risk, reputation at risk. And, and that's what, we, what we're trying to help. Like the password manager, the, the main goal, our main goal is to help you stay secure and so that you can focus on your own mission. We will provide you the tool to just do the basics, copy the basics of cybersecurity. We want to give you more uh, best practices so that you can also help your organization uh, uh, get more awareness about the importance of cybersecurity. And then you can focus on what you want to do, your own mission as a, as a nonprofit. It's all about the people. I'm going to just like say it and repeat it and uh, insist on it, but it's really about the people and about the way they use uh, the tooling and the way they, they practice and the way they are owning their own digital hygiene. And there are so many accounts that we have to use out there, whether it's in our personal life, whether it's in our work life, uh, managing logins for the multitude of accounts and, uh, and things that we have is, it's impossible at the end of the day. You cannot memorize everything. If I think about myself in Dashlane today, I have something like 1,200 credentials. Obviously I've been using Dashlane for quite some time. I've accumulated uh, credentials for uh, my personal life, for my work life, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of different shared accounts from uh, different people, but I can't remember all of them. So I need to find a way to uh, 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 use a secure method because the, the, just the, the alternative is not manageable and it's just uh, unsecure and impossible to do. So here are some of the common password pitfalls, so the, the things that you should be really mindful about not doing. So the first one, we've mentioned it already, like sharing logins, among colleagues in, in an unsecure way is really a bad idea. Maybe it will be okay, maybe uh, having a post-it note that you share with a colleague or when you send it by Slack or email like, is okay, but the problem is not the, the, the individual act. The problem is multi multitude and multiplication of doing it across the organization. At some point, one of those passwords will leak because they, they, they've been shared too many times and you don't control who has access or who doesn't have access. The second pitfall is uh, if you use very weak, weak passwords, then they're easy to hack. Today, with the, the, the computing power that you have in the cloud and on the computers, it's if the, the password is super short, super weak, or even like it's a, a random word from the dictionary, it's so fast, like it's a question of seconds for a hacker to be able to brute force it and to find that, 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 that password. And here we can also go into more detail if you want to uh, in the Q&A, but it's really about the length and the, the, the randomness of, of the password. So you should try to use complex, long, hard to hack passwords. Storing passwords in the web browsers, sticky notes, Excel, Google Sheet, whatever, is a bad idea. Obviously, they're not meant to do that. They're not secure storage systems. So you can still do it. Of course, it, it works. But in the same way, uh, you wouldn't uh, uh, put uh, gold uh, uh, from banks in, uh, out there, like in a random room. You put it in a vault. So your password, they are sensitive information. They are very uh, valuable. They should be put in a vault that is dedicated to storing this in a secure way. And finally, We've said it already, but uh, reusing personal passwords and username for business reasons is a bad idea. Uh, and users, like uh, consumers, are as much at risk of being hacked as uh, businesses. And uh, usually it's even like uh, easier for hackers to hack uh, those big consumer websites. So they will get uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of logins and credentials from those websites. And then they will try to reuse it 
to hack the businesses where the money is. So, uh, so that's what is called credential stuffing. I get, uh, I don't know, like a database of billions of uh, credentials that I've uh, leaked from the whatever website, and then I use those to try and hack the systems of the, the organization. So don't reuse personal data for business. And so the goal of Pass Manager, like I said, is to really to give you the tools, but also to give you the peace of mind. So we want to give you tools that are as seamless as possible, as simple to use as possible, even though, to be honest, uh, uh, Pass Manager are still a pretty technical tool because uh, we're talking about cybersecurity, we're talking about complex security topics. And our goal is to make it as simple as possible to hide that complexity, to hide the security complexity, so that it feels like an obvious user experience for everybody to use. The end user uh, UI, the end user uh, uh, flows needs to be as simple as possible so that people like using them and like adopting them. And by the way, that's why there's a the part of, about uh, storing the password in a secure way. But for most, uh, there's the day to day experience of, okay, I have a password manager, I'm browsing online, and Dashlane, for instance, will uh, naturally do the auto login, the auto fill of the credentials on the website so that you don't even have to, uh, to think about it. Like you can be that magical moment where I'm arriving on a website, the login form is automatically populated, I just have to press uh, the button to validate and I'm in. And that way, you make sure that uh, you both get the, 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 the security, but also the convenience by using a password manager. So if we go back to the people and how you can educate your people to understand better the, 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 imp the impact and the implication of cybersecurity, first, like all those metrics that we've just shared, all those examples, there are plenty out there, but Start with that. Start with okay. Uh, if you think you are, you don't matter because you are just a regular volunteer or regular employee in the organization. You actually do matter because you're part of the puzzle and you're part of the risk. So you need to understand the implication. If you get hacked, whether it's in your personal life or in your in your work life, you will you will put at risk uh, your uh, organization. You will put at risk also potentially your own uh, uh, financial, uh, email, uh, uh, social media, and so on. So you need to help them understand the impact and using the metrics and so on do, do, does help here. Then you need to educate them on the best practices. I've just shared a few about uh, what not to do uh, with passwords. There are plenty out there as well, and we're going to go, uh, we're going to more details. And then, like I said, let's give them the tools to make it easy. And that's also about the education on how to use the tool the right way, uh, how to, uh, uh, the same way I am reading my, my toothbrush example, but uh, uh, brushing your teeth, you need to do it the right way. You need to take the right time to, to do it. So that's not something that you're born with. Uh, you, you teach your kid to brush their teeth and to floss. So the same way, uh, if you give, uh, give you the tool of a password manager, I need to teach you how to use it. So the most helpful when you choose a password manager, whatever it is, uh, uh, are the following. So I think it's really important that those that, that, that type of features that are really critical to have in password manager. The first one is, of course, it needs to be simple to use. If you find a solution that's too cumbersome, that's uh, not intuitive enough, then uh, your uh, team will not adopt it and you will uh, fail in that mission. So we, and that's a very hard, by the way, that's a very hard challenge for us password manager because uh, yet again, uh, there's a lot of technical complexity behind password manager, but we're trying to make it as simple as possible. And then there's a question of, of course, of uh, taste and flavors and so on, but uh, find the one that you like using and that will improve the adoption rate. So really your goal uh, is to find the solution that your team likes and that will, they will use for sure. Convenience is a big piece of it. Auto feel of uh, when, you, when you navigate online, making sure you, you can sync across devices so that you can have it both on your desktop, on your mobile phone, everywhere where you need to access your credentials, it needs to be magically there. And that, they are very important for productivity. Obviously, having robust security and a track record of not being breached as a password manager is critical. So uh, look at this, and it's, uh, that's public data. If you're using SSO for your organization, it's a good idea to find a password manager that can integrate with your SSO solution. It's actually making it more convenient for the, the employees and all the volunteers, and even more secure. So that's a good capability to have. Dark web monitoring. So unfortunately, whatever you do, you may at some point have your password being leaked out there in, uh, by, by hack hackers. So this will land in what we call the dark web, which is that uh, third year uh, space where hackers like share and sell uh, data. So what we do uh, as a password manager, for instance, is that we will notify you if your email appears in a breach. And that way you can know that that website has been breached and you can change the password and make sure that you, you minimize the risk. So dark web monitoring nowadays is actually, I think, the most helpful for a password manager. 
And then finally, if you want to get your digital hygiene in a better place, uh, if you want to learn how to improve your, your, your personal situation, having so, some form of password score, password health score is important because it will help you understand, okay, uh, I have that bunch of uh, credentials that are actually weak. I should uh, change them to make them stronger. And actually reusing that the same password between those different websites, let me make, make sure that I generate a unique password for all those websites and so on. And password health is a score is a way to, to, to monitor that progress. Yet again, people, 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 uh, password hygiene starts with the people. So of course you need to provide the tool, you need to provide the best practices, but you need to provide them uh, by connecting with the, the, the donors, with the volunteers, with the partners, with everybody that's your stakeholders in the organization so that you, they understand what you're doing and that we're not doing password hygiene and just for the sake of password hygiene, but just because it, it will help the organization be uh, more secure, but also be more productive because if you have to react to a breach or to a security incident, it's going to disrupt your activity like uh, like, like crazy. So um, make sure you don't do one and not the other. So you need to have the right tooling, that's for sure, but that's kind of the easy part. And then you need to use the tool and make sure that the organization adopt the tool. So and, uh, that's, a, that's a place where it's not going to be a one, one time thing and then you forget about it. You will have to regularly come back to it and repeat and uh, provide awareness uh, training and, uh, and give examples of, okay, uh, I don't know what are what are the employees with the best security score. They have a password health score of one percent. Great, that's a great example. Let's have everybody try to 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 improve by uh, by changing five passwords and making them unique and complex and so on and so on. So really, uh, I'm thinking about, for instance, also one of our customers. They have really embedded the password manager at the start of their onboarding. Each time they have a newcomer joining the organization, as part of the onboarding, they will spend like half an hour educating the, the person about uh, uh, Dashlane and how they should use Dashlane and importing their credentials into Dashlane and then uh, uh, looking at the password score and helping them really like a uh, hands-on uh, practice and hands-on awareness training. So of course we cannot do this uh, for uh, in organization for everybody, but just to give you a sense of uh, the level of, uh, of education that's required for us to really generate that, uh, that, that culture of cybersecurity. Yes, it doesn't have to be difficult. It's really about obvious conversation. So let's, uh, let's go into a bit more details. Adoption, number one, like I said, really important. And adoption can only come if people are, are bought in and are uh, understand why it matters, understand that the risk uh, they're, they're, they're facing when they're, they're not doing things the right way. And uh, I always like to say to, to customers that use your own context. Ho hopefully you have never been breached. If you've been breached, that's a great context to share for on newcomers, but use your own context. What if uh, the organization was breached? What would be the impact? Can you can you brainstorm with me about the impact? Okay, maybe uh, uh, data would be leaked, and we would uh, have a, a donors' uh, data, uh, very sensitive data out there. We would impact the reputation of the organization. We would be disrupting the organization because we have to cr scramble to to fix uh, the, the, the security leaks. So, what are the implications? What are the threat against the organization? For instance, that's an exercise that we do even as a company at Dashlane. We uh, regularly uh, revisit our threat model. What are the attack vectors around our organization? Obviously, we are a cybersecurity company, so it's even more important to, to us. But you can do the same type of exercise just to explain and uh, highlight what are the risks uh, uh, to your to, to your uh, to your employees to so that and they understand the, the potential impact and are like more bought into the, the adoption. Second phase. Acceptance, that's really okay. Now I understand, now I'm starting to use the tool, I'm starting to get on board into the, the improving my own situation and, and my own uh, uh, cybersecurity practices. I, I understand what I should take and here, you need to, to train them and like bring them up a level by level to, uh, to, to being a, a top, uh, top, uh, top cybersecurity level. So at first it might be just, okay, let's start having everything uh, in the password manager so that we have a control about it. Let's look at the password health score. Let's try to improve it to have like a, just let's, let's get rid first of the compromised password that were uh, um, distributed from the dark and monitoring alerts. That's the first step. Let's make sure that we don't have too many reused passwords. And then progressively, you can ramp up and you can like uh, level up on the practices to, until eventually you may have like, I don't know, uh, one of the password health score and very unique password everywhere. You may have a two-factor authentication activated on all your critical uh, uh, systems and, uh, and, and, and so on and so on, like uh, regular dark and monitoring reviews. There's a lot you can do, and that's like when well, you need to continue. It's not a one-time, uh, one-time thing. We have new people joining all the time. You have people that you need to offboard 
that uh, that you need to be careful about uh, the, the data as well. And even for like the employees that are still there, you need to regularly come back to it and say, okay, how are things going? How are we protecting the organization and so on? Sometimes uh, when I have customers uh, talking to me about uh, adoption of patch manager, they say, okay, I'm actually going to start only with a uh, with the DIT team or only with the finance team because they are the critical ones. And I tell them, okay, but if you do that, you're not actually protecting the organization. You're going to protect that little group of the organization and maybe that's important, but actually everybody can be an, a door, an entry door to, to the, system, the internal systems. So if you don't protect everybody, then you're, you're missing the point. It needs to be a 100% adoption by everybody and you need to adopt the password manager to all the people of the organization uh, without exception. In a sense, and maybe you're going to roll out, you want to deploy this by starting by the ones that are more your ambassadors and are more, more uh, tech savvy, for instance, and that's a good idea as well because then they can be delays for you. But don't assume that because you've done like a, uh, what you would consider like the critical people in uh, maybe IT, finance, uh, uh, the, the board, the, the leadership, and so on, you're done. You know, you need to then continue going through 100% adoption. And so you need to find a path which is the best rollout for you. But uh, uh, Less than one hundred percent adoption means that you still have a, a risk. And of course, when you're even when you're with one hundred percent adoption, you still have risk. So it's really important to to, to to do the whole job. I mentioned that already, but yeah, whenever you onboard something new, the moment where you onboard a person, that's the moment where you can really teach them and educate them about the importance of the digital hygiene and pass management. So ensure you start from the from from the beginning. You have the, the, the training program or the onboarding program that is uh, uh, distributed to, uh, to, uh, to all newcomers so that any addition to the team will start from a strong footing and you will make sure that uh, you avoid the syndrome of, okay, uh, I actually had an intern for six months and he lived all the password from the organization. I don't know if you remember, remember the, the solo win uh, uh, supply chain attack. So that was a, that was a big attack in, uh, uh, a few years ago about solo win, which is that uh, big... Uh, a technical uh, company providing solutions for a lot of people, Microsoft and, and others. They, act, they had actually an internal leak, a password that was the way the hackers got them. Um, more recently, Okta, the big identity provider, had a similar issue. They had a, a third party uh, uh, provider uh, not doing things the right way, and that was a leak inside the organization. So, yet again, uh, Whoever you onboard into your organization, whether they are like a, an employee, an intern, a volunteer, maybe a provider, a third party, make sure they have the right standards of, uh, of practices uh, around the uh, security. And finally, uh, continuing to monitor the health of the organization. You have tooling like DARPA monitoring is one, password health score is the other one. Uh, there are different ways of approaching it, but it needs to be like a an ongoing effort to monitor the, 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 the health of the organization, make sure that you don't uh, like uh, uh, lower your guard and that it's not because uh, people think that, okay, now they're using a passive manager and things seem, seem to be going okay, that it, it's, uh, it's the end of the journey. It's, uh, it's an ongoing uh, motion, an ongoing journey that you need to be always on top, uh, on top of. I want to share, uh, I think there are two case studies. The first one is Nika. So they're sharing so, uh, how they've been really working on their uh, password health score. So in, uh, say, so in 2020, they, like everybody else, uh, through COVID, they had a lot of people moving uh, more virtually than ever, more remote. And of course, when people are more disconnected, then you increase the risk across the organization of uh, practices like not being as good and uh, like people being a bit disconnected and more risk. Um, so they wanted to really find a solution that allows them to, to uh, step up in that uh, remote uh, hybrid world, like making sure that they can monitor uh, everybody, the, th the threats uh, again, 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 the, the organization in a, in, a, in a stronger way. So, uh, having stronger password managers was an obvious, uh, uh, stronger password, sorry, was an obvious place where they could ramp up. So, using a password manager, using password health scores, they've been working with the team, making sure that they, they raise the, the, the password health, which also means that they've been cleaning up their uh, compromised password, cleaning up their weak password and their reused passwords. And the fact that you have a unique, complex password on each of the websites doesn't mean that that website or that SaaS tool cannot be breached, but it means that at least you're reducing your exposure, you're reducing the risk. If one single uh, service is breached, that's still an issue, but at least it's not going to contaminate the, the, the other system that you use. You're kind of uh, like uh, 
having silos around all of those, uh, those, uh, those uh, services by the fact that the, 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 the keys to those services are unique and individual. So that's a, that's a, that's a very important, important one. You can find when you get the slides, you can find a link with more detail about that, that case study about me. But, uh, it's an interesting one, but really, really very proactive about, okay, let's take the, the organization high in terms of a password health score and let's, uh, let's work as a, as a team to, to make it happen. That, uh, that uh, second example, uh, Village Rich, uh, so a nonprofit, a uh, very interesting uh, uh, organization. So same thing, they, they felt that they needed like a better uh, uh, cybersecurity practices. And so they decided to use Dashlane to, uh, to, to step up and really uh, provide the tools to the, to the organization. They've improved the password health score since they started using Dashlane by 122%. And that's, of course, thanks to being able to monitor it through the, the password manager, but also thanks to the practices that they put in place to uh, identify and clean up like the weak spot in their password hygiene, make sure that they use the, the data from the password health score, from the dark monitoring to, to target the, the employees that are most at risk first and like progressively get the whole organization to, to uh, improving the, 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 the awareness, improving the culture of security and, and make it part of the, the default uh, practices uh, of the organization. So it's, uh, it's uh, onboarding on the password manager is also a good way to springboard the security and awareness and make sure people understand that because they are, it's everyone, everyone's responsibility. They have the password manager on their desktop, they have the password manager on their mobile with their own credential. They can now have visibility on how they do their own practices. And that's a way to really, uh, really weigh the, the awareness, which is what matters at the end of the day. Okay, just to wrap up, um, and hopefully uh, uh, I'm happy to answer any question afterward, but uh, in a sense, security today is kind of simpler than it used to be. If I think about it, a few years back, cybersecurity was a very uh, technical, very complex world with a lot of heavy solutions uh, that were a bit uh, um, not easy for uh, uh, IT admin and for organization to, to, to adopt. We're trying to change that. The password manager are trying to make that mission easier and easier. And, uh, our, our, our sort of like our, our motto is try to make a security simple for everybody, for organization and for their people. That's a way where uh, password managers and Dashlane can help. Um, if you want to give it a try, uh, there's that uh, QR code uh, uh, that you can probably scan with your phone and that will take you to be able to uh, start a trial with, uh, with Dashlane business. You can also, of course, find us on dashlane.com. Uh, you can we'll find, you'll have the data and the slides afterwards, so you can also revisit uh, the deck. Um, but I really encourage you, uh, whether it's, by the way, Dashlane or another password manager, you should have a password manager in today's world, uh, all, all fully connected, remote world where you use more and more SaaS solution. Not having a password manager is really a bad idea. That's a, a must-have in, in today's world. So I really encourage you to, to use a password manager like, like Dashlane. All right. I think that's it. I will just stay a bit longer on the on that screen if people want to uh, to scan the QR code. So it was a bit hard for me to uh, to follow the chat at the same time, but I'm happy to uh, uh, to take any questions and hopefully the team can help me also like uh, manage Q and A questions. Yeah, I'll let some of your team members unmute themselves. There were a lot of questions in the chat, and your team has been doing a great job of answering the questions. If they want to highlight something that they want you to answer, go ahead and unmute yourself. Great. Um, one of the first questions are, um, what's the approximate cost of Dashlane's password manager for a small nonprofit organization? Um, and so I can actually answer this quickly. Um, we have a special offer that's exclusive just for TechSoup partners. Um, so that would be 50% off. And if you have any questions about that, please reach out to someone at TechSoup. Actually, it just got popped in to the chat. Thank you so much to the TechSoup crew. Um, so a great discount for all of our very valued nonprofit organizations out there. Um, additionally, are password managers safe? Isn't there a big risk when a site is hacked? Fred, do you want to tackle that one? Yeah, um, obviously that's a, that's a critical one. And uh, so yes, password managers are safe, or they are safer than uh, not using password managers. And there's no solution to 100% perfect. There will always be hackers finding ways around password managers. But just so that you understand better the way we've designed it from a technical standpoint, we are using a principle that is called zero knowledge architecture. And what is behind that big words? 
is the fact that we're building the solution so that the only person who can access the data is the user themselves, not Dashlane, not a hacker, not everybody else. What that means is that everything will happen locally on your device. You're going to start storing data into the Dashlane app on your device, and we're going to encrypt that data with the, the key to the data to your vault, which is called the master password. So when you start with Dashlane, when you create an account, we'll ask you to generate a master password. You're the only, uh, when only the user has the master password. It's never transmitted to Dashlane. We don't have it and so on. And we use that master password as the key to encrypt your vault. And, and, and so that's really the, 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 the crux of it, the, 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 the heart of it, which means that whenever the data, if it, tra it transits, for instance, when you're going to sync from one device to the other, Obviously, the data is going to go through the Dashlane servers, but they will go in an encrypted, encrypted, encrypted fashion, and we don't have the key, so we can't access the, 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 the data. The only person that has the key is the end user, which, by the way, means that uh, for us, it generates a lot of complicated uh, uh, flows to, to build. For instance, when you want to share a credential between two people, there's a lot of cryptographic keys happening behind the scene to make sure that only the person that shared and the person who uh, you're sharing to can access the data and nobody else. So, it's a, I, mean, I can go into more technical details if you want to, but that's kind of the, the, the essence of it. So local encryption on the device with the key that only you have, that's what ensures that uh, nobody else but you can access the data. Perfect. And another question from QA is, do you have any advice for IT managers who have a hard time convincing their board of trustees to fund cybersecurity projects? Yeah, that's a tricky one because the problem with security, it's a bit like an insurance investment. So uh, you hope you will never be breached and so on. So it's not like it's going to bring value to the organization or to your own mission. It's more like an insurance. But at the same time, there's so much data out there in case uh, you get breached of how much it's going to cost you and what's going to be the impact. That uh, I think it's, uh, it's worth putting that money, uh, that, that risk in the balance. So um, the good news is that password managers are actually, relatively speaking, pretty cheap. Uh, cybersecurity solutions compared to a lot of other solutions. But I think that's why it's they are a good idea to, to start with them. You already get a, the, the coverage of having like a, the basics protected with your end user being protected by a better password hygiene. And then you can also try to find more advanced cybersecurity projects, but uh, uh, start with the easy one, let's say. But it's a very tricky uh, situation. Even for us, uh, we are a cybersecurity company, but when we have to fund our own cybersecurity project, we also have to to, uh, to convince and get buy, buy in from our board. Perfect, thank you. Uh, no, another one is I've always been concerned with using a password manager. What if it gets hacked? So this is similar to before, but I know that you had mentioned um, about the security use, but what say is different compared to um, some of the other password managers out there? Well, the first thing is at least Dashlane has never been breached. So that's a good, a good news. And I'm touching wood that it stays that way, even though I'm realistic, it may happen one day because yet again, cybersecurity is a, is a tough uh, uh, industry and uh, we're always trying to, to be more uh, creative and smarter than the, the hackers out there. But sometimes it's, uh, it's complicated. So it's really about using very simple principles of security that are easy to, uh, to, to build and easy to maintain and easy to monitor. So uh, the problem is that, I mean, I would reverse the question in a sense, uh, what is the alternative? The alternative is uh, to store uh, your passwords in a Google Sheet. Uh, Google Sheets are not made for uh, security, so they can be leaked. They can be actually, if you mess up with the access right, they can be uh, uh, indexed by Google search engine. So you, there are plenty of uh, use cases, um, examples of people who have leaked uh, their credential to Google Sheets on, uh, on, the, on the internet. Um, We've seen the, the post-it notes and the, the pictures of the post-it notes out there and so on. So I'm not sure there's a real alternative to uh, trusting password managers. Then you need to find the right one that you trust, of course. And that's a question of uh, doing your benchmark and doing your research about, okay, what are the, 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 the trusted solution? But uh, I really think that uh, nowadays password managers need to be a, a de facto uh, must-have for everybody else. Uh, it's so much better than just not doing it. Um, I'm trying to find a, a, like a... Uh, an analogy, but think about, uh, for instance, um, uh, some years back, everybody was driving without having a seat belt, and everybody felt like it was okay, and then there were accidents, and then at some point, uh, having a seat belt became like the norm, and uh, the regulation forced you to do it, 
And today, I think nobody would uh, think about driving on a highway without having a seat belt uh, uh, because you know it will protect you, even though it's uh, um, it's not the perfect solution. You can still uh, crash a car and you can still uh, be injured. But same thing, passenger manager, there should be the seat belt of you uh, driving on the, the highway of the internet. So. Okay, thank you. Um, and similar, I know you just mentioned Google, but is Google Password Manager an effective solution? It is. It is for the consumer world. I don't think it's enough for the for organization and for the the the, the, uh, the enterprise world. So when you when you when you use Google Password Manager, what you need to know is that you're actually giving your credentials to Google. So you can trust Google. That's fine, uh, but you know that uh, with the solutions like Google, uh, well, uh, if you're not paying for it, uh, you actually, uh, as the saying goes, uh, you're, uh, you're the product. So they will use your data for uh, marketing, they will use your data for advertising and so on. And uh, that's only me because I have, of course, a privacy uh, sensitive background and so on, but I use Google products, but I don't trust Google that much either. So I want to make sure that I don't put all my eggs in the same basket. Uh, I trust Google for search engine. I uh, trust them because I use them on the internet. But um, I'd rather keep my passwords in a solution that is uh, that I'm paying for. That's also a way for me to trust that they're not going to use that data for other means, other reasons, and also uh, separate things so that I don't have all my eggs in the same basket. And another example is that um, I used to have a Gmail account uh, a long time ago, but I started personally using a, a third-party solution called, called Fastmail. As an independent Australian company, I pay for it. There's a small subscription, a yearly subscription that I pay. But at least I know they're not using my emails and my data to uh, to market for me and to uh, to do advertisement against me and that type of stuff. So that's more of the, the consumer side. But as an organi organization, it's kind of the same thing. Um, you never know. So I, I think it's better to like uh, spread your risk and and uh, not trust that the uh, big tech are, are doing everything perfect. Great. Um, and does Dashlane support centralized corporate storage for shared corporate credentials? So I'm not sure I understand the question, but I'm going to try and uh, answer it and you tell me if uh, that answers the question. So um, there is a sharing capability in Dashlane. So as an organization, you can have credentials that are shared between individuals or shared between groups. So uh, let's think about, okay, I don't know, I have a Twitter account for my organization that needs to be shared by the marketing team, then that uh, with different access rights and so on, you can have uh, this story in Dashlane and share it, whether it's with individuals or with different groups, so that, can, that can, everybody can access the credentials and can, can use it to autofill and to, to access the Twitter account of the organization. So that's, that's the answer if that's uh, the question. I think that works. And um, in the QA, if that did not answer, please uh, let us know. Um, and another one is, can you address how FIDO will allow for a passwordless future? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, so the FIDO Alliance, for those who are not uh, aware of what it is, it's the, it's, it was started in 2013, if I remember correctly. It's a, like a consortium of different organizations in the authentication space. And uh, like a lot of people in there, like Microsoft, uh, Intel, Apple, uh, um, Dashlane is part of the FIDO Alliance. And the goal of that, uh, that consortium has been to try and promote better authentication uh, solutions. So it started off with a two-factor and multi-factor authentication as a way to protect on top of passwords. And more recently, they've been uh, uh, um, des designing new technical protocols. One of them is called WebAuthn, which has been standardized for the web as a way to both support uh, multi-factor authentication uh, solutions, but also as a way to potentially replace passwords in the long run by a con concept that has been called passkeys. And passkeys, essentially they are passwords. They're just like passwords that are a long uh, uh, string of uh, characters that you cannot never remember. So they're like a, uh, a, a secret that you would be able to use on a website without even knowing that secret because the solution, the technical solution will do it on, on your behalf. So it's a great, it has a great, it has a lot of potential, especially because it's sort of phishing resistant because you don't, you don't know the, 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 the pass key. You can't really leak it to a hacker that can use it to, to connect uh, uh, to the website by stealing your password. But we were in the very early days. So there were announcements earlier this year about uh, the first support of pass keys. Uh, then also announced uh, like in the summer our own support of pass keys. We'll see how fast it goes, but it goes in the right direction, I think, to like a, 
building a better, more secure uh, identity world. So I'm really uh, looking forward to what, uh, how things will unfold. It's going to take time because yet again, we are so used to using passwords. Uh, everything is built on password today. So migrating to a passkey world is definitely going to take a lot of time. But at least that uh, we embark on that journey and uh, everybody seems to be kind of aligned of, okay, that's the direction to go. So hopefully uh, we'll have a, a better future. Perfect. I know we're getting close on time, so we've selected two more, um, and the rest of the team will answer all other questions that are in the Q&A. Um, the first question is, how do password managers work? Do you manually input your username and password and it saves the account for your eyes only? Is it a simple process typically? Yeah, so the, 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 the way we do it at least is uh, whenever you're going to, so let's assume I create an account on Dashlane, I'm a new customer, I'm starting to use Dashlane for my uh, my password management practices. So of course you can obviously, if you have passwords somewhere else, like in your Chrome password manager, you can import them to start with. But then what will happen is that once you start uh, browsing online, let's assume you come on a new, on a website, you're going to type your login and password for the first time in that uh, login form. At that point, Dashlane will actually recognize that you've been doing that and will suggest that, that you save the, 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 those credentials in the, in, the, in the password manager. And we'll do it automatically. You just have to press save and we'll do it for you. And then the next time you come on the same website, because now we have the information, we'll just uh, auto-fill, auto-populate that uh, login form on your behalf. And then you just have to press click and then you're in. There, there are a bit more uh, options to make it even like an auto-login so you don't even have to click on the button, but that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. So. Uh, as you navigate, we automatically save passwords for you on your behalf, and then we will use it, use those to, to, to log in automatically. Then as you start populating your vault, of course, that's when you can start having like a, a password health score being computed to get a sense of, okay, actually I'm reusing the same password on all those different websites. I should have, um, um, I should actually change those to make them more, more secure. And that's also a place where Dashing can help, can help you generate strong and unique passwords. So, if you go, for instance, to register on a new device, you can ask Dashlane to automatically populate all the fields for you based on your information, generate automatically a strong credential, a strong password, sorry, and then save it automatically for you. I mean, if I think about my own use case, uh, in Dashlane, I actually know none of my passwords. Uh, the only one that I know is my master password because that's my key to enter Dashlane, but all the 1,200 passwords that I have in Dashlane, uh, I don't know any of those credentials. No, that's not exactly true. I do know the the, the, the password to my uh, email account, because that's uh, also an important one. So I know two passwords. Perfect, thank you. And could you talk a little bit more about the VPN function and um, how that takes security to another level? Yes, so um, as we've been building Dashlane, Dashlane in time, we've uh, extended the, the, to everything that's trying to secure your identity online. So of course we manage uh, credentials, but you also can put your uh, information about your personal identity in there, like your identity card or your, your uh, address. You can put your payment uh, information so that we will autofill for you uh, seamlessly when you, you navigate online. We, like I said, offer a solution like Docker monitoring and we decided to also offer VPN. So VPN is a different sort of uh, solution because it helps you protect your internet traffic. It will encrypt the, the, the internet traffic that's coming uh, on your network that nobody can eavesdrop on it and can try to, uh, to access the data that is in transit as you're accessing website and so on. So it's in particular very useful when you are, for instance, on the unprotected uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. Let's say you're in the airport, you want to connect to the Wi-Fi airport, usually that's a uh, very unprotected Wi-Fi, so you may, may as well like uh, uh, activate the Dashlane VPN to protect that traffic and make sure that you're not leaking data uh, to whoever is uh, eavesdropping on that. Um, if you don't have a corporate VPN with your organization, that's also another way you can uh, you can use the, the VPN to have a better network traffic uh, protection in a sense. Perfect. And um, one more quick question. I know we have a couple more moments um, and then we will be sending out um, an email address for anyone that has following questions. But Fred, can you share how we should decide if you should have a business or a team account or the new plan that we just launched starter? Yeah, that's a good question. So the way we've thought about those different plans are the starter plan is really from, uh, for you to get uh, get started with Dashlane, but, uh, like the name implies. So if you're a very, very tiny organization uh, with uh, something like less than 10 people, that's a good way to start. 
then the main regular uh, plans are the team plan and the, the, the business plan. The team plan is for organization that have a, um, probably fewer uh, people, but also don't already have a fully uh, advanced IT stack. And by that, what I mean is like, you don't necessarily have SSO. If you don't have SSO, you probably don't need the business tier, which is where really you have that, those advanced features that allow you to connect dashlane to your SSO solution, to your single sign-on solution. Uh, we also offer things like uh, um, uh, scheme provisioning. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit technical here, but scheme provisioning is a, essentially a mechanism for you to automatically add the new uh, employees into the dashlane account and remove them when they are board. So there's a lot of automation in the business uh, in the business tier. So if you have a, an organization which is not as advanced in terms of uh, uh, IT uh, uh, complexity, you may you'll probably find with the team team tier. But of course, if you have more needs. Uh, because you, are, you, are, you have those, uh, those, those solutions like SSO and, and Scheme, then probably the, the business tier is better for you. In the business tier, one thing that I like is that we also offer a um, family plan for all employees. So uh, as I said, uh, the, one of the risks is to reuse uh, uh, the same account between uh, personal life and, uh, and work life. So we are uh, um, offering a family plan so that each employee can actually uh, use Dashlane for the rest of their family to protect themselves more broadly. Wonderful. Thank you. I think that those are all the questions we have for today. Um, and just to share with everyone who's still on, we did share the email um, and phone number for any questions you might have um, following this webinar. Thank you. That was excellent. Um, Frederick, you answered all those questions so thoroughly. I really, really enjoyed this webinar. And thank you for um, the TechSoup team who popped in, Allison, um, Nason, and Gail, and your team did an incredible job. Thank you so much to Andre, Casey, Chris, Manon, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Manuel, Patrick, you guys are awesome, and I hope you come back. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, have a great day, everybody. Go vote. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.